Hi, this is Mike Hendrickson from Strata Hadoop World in San Jose. I'm here with Adam Kokolowski. Adam, how you doing? Uh, doing really well, Mike. Thanks for having me. So you're the CTO of the cloud uh, and data services at IBM. That's right. So can you, I, I know IBM's a very large company and there's different groups that do a lot of different things. Can you tell us a little bit about what IBM's cloud platform and services look like? Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, we can take the kind of traditional view of starting at the infrastructure as a service tier, right? I mean, it's the foundational layer that everybody needs to have. For us, that tier is uh, SoftLayer. SoftLayer is a company that IBM acquired a couple of years ago uh, and offers a unique mix of both virtualized infrastructure and bare metal hardware provisioned via APIs, fully automated, available across the globe in uh, data centers uh, you know, that are fully connected by a private network backplane. Uh, so it's a really good mix both for IBM's global client base as well as for the modern world of globally distributed applications. Above SoftLayer, you have the cloud platform that we call Bluemix. Bluemix is based on open technologies in Cloud Foundry uh, and provides us with a great marketplace to expose all of the rich intellectual property that we have in IBM as services in the Cloud Foundry concept. So there's this rich spectrum of services, both IBM uh, delivered open source as well as uh, community marketplace uh, that application developers can use uh, and compose into applications that run on that platform. And then of course we've got a rich spectrum of software as a service applications that appeal to specific business needs. So you guys work with pretty much every type of company in almost right. every vertical and every size from small to really large. And you're probably hearing a lot more people wanting to learn and, and adopt Hadoop. Are you seeing a skills gap, though, with some of the companies that want to go there and want to get on the Hadoop man wagon um, and not knowing how to spin this up and get going? Absolutely. I mean, I think it's well understood that there is that skills gap, and it's certainly something that we see, you know, across the spectrum of, of, of IBM clients. And I think, you know, we can try to address this in, 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 in a two-pronged approach, right? On the one side, there's education. Uh, and in IBM, we, we've partnered with dozens of universities, both in the U.S. and globally, to introduce additional uh, coursework Work that helps our, you know, our graduates be better prepared for this big data world. Uh, you know, we have Big Data University, a, a set of online courses that uh, our experts have put together that uh, enable, you know, a, a self-service uh, experience to, to address the skills gap. So, you know, you have the education piece, and you also have the product, you know, the evolution of the product itself, right? Uh, and I think there you see a, an increasing focus on interfaces that are familiar to the business analyst, that are familiar to the knowledge worker, spreadsheet-style interfaces, uh, you know, robust SQL interfaces that will support, you know, the, the spectrum of business intelligence tools directly, right? And so that, you know, puts this power of Hadoop into the hands of the knowledge worker without necessarily expecting them to bring a full set of Hadoop skills to bear. Okay, but putting it in the hands of the, the knowledge worker, so there, there seems to be a real focus, and I've, I've heard this more and more at this event especially, is how do you get to insight mm -hmm. from your data? So a lot of people want to get their data and they want to understand what the data is about and how to use it. But how do they actually make business decisions quicker yeah. with their data now? Yeah. I think what we're seeing is that the number one sort of inhibitor to that right now is data preparation. Right? It's great that I have a SQL interface or a spreadsheet interface to, to my data in Hadoop, but if that data isn't properly curated and properly cleansed, it, it isn't actually you know, a valid source for me to derive insight from or for me to take action on. Right? And so you know, the data preparation has, has been understood as something that is, you know, taking a significant chunk of time right now. And I think the extent to which we can streamline some of those processes, to the extent to which we can enable a better kind of human-machine collaboration, because there are humans involved in the loop here, mm -hmm. right? But to the extent that we can help them, you know, identify the right sort of cleansing operations and then push that down into the system, right? And track the changes that are being made, establish good data lineage, establish good audit trails, right? We'll, we'll do a great job of, you know, establishing curated data sets that, that are trustworthy. And then, you know, once you have those, now you can really get on to the business of, of driving insight. So, you know, one of the darlings I've, I've been hearing, and this is probably about two years now or a year and a half, is Spark. Mm -hmm. Where does Spark fit in the IBM ecosystem and the, and the data ecosystem? Certainly Spark has been, uh, you know, an, on the rise. I mean, we just heard from, from Mate earlier in this conference that it's now the most active project of Apache and has really sort of established a broad base, not only of contributors, but also an ecosystem around it. Uh, and I think, you know, one of the really interesting points here is that Spark has certainly grown up within the Hadoop ecosystem, but I think the direction we're seeing is that it's not exclusive to it. One of the key themes for Spark going forward is, is the support of you know, data frames and external data sources that connect not only to data that we have in Hadoop, but enterprise data warehouses, NoSQL databases, traditional relational databases, data that have got stored in flat files. You know, 
uh, Spark is the unifying execution engine across this rich mix of data sources is something that we at IBM are incredibly excited about because we've got a, a, a lot of clients who, you know, they've got Hadoop infrastructures, but they've got data locked up in all kinds of other systems too. So you, you do work with a lot of the enterprises that have enormous amounts of data. Is Spark going to be a solution for a lot of those companies? I mean, we think it is. We, we think Spark's going to be a key part of our strategy going forward. We think that uh, Spark allows for, you know, the, the unified programming model for both, you know, kind of streaming data and batch data, uh, the, you know, data scientist friendly interfaces with Python and R support. Um, Spark has a lot of good things going forward. It, it seems like the kind of rust, robust foundation on which we can build, you know, solutions that demonstrate real business value in individual domains and in industry verticals, right? I think there's, there's certainly a, a ton of opportunity there. Uh, so some of the companies you, you work with have, you know, systems or records sure. that are long lived and, and they have old data and a lot of it, deep data. How would, what, what advice would you give them to get started? I think one of the challenges that we see there, to be quite honest, is, is organizations that don't actually know what data they have. I mean, you ask some of these large institutions even to list all of the databases that they have, let alone data sets, and they're hard pressed to do it, right? So this, uh, you know, this, the, the, the problem we have here is one of cataloging, it's one of metadata, it's one of, you know, presenting, uh, um, and not just metadata in terms of kind of raw technological metadata, but metadata that is represented in language of business objects, right? So that I actually understand the, the business value associated with these different data sets. And if we can push in that direction of, you know, kind of push publishing more and more information, you know, about the different databases that are available, then we can use execution engines like Spark that have this kind of rich multi-workload, multi-source support to start to uh, extract the data from those systems and pull it into analysis. So I think the other thing, the other key point that I want to make too, is that, you know, that private data has historically been analyzed in a silo. Yep. Yep. But in fact, a ton of the time, what you really want to do is blend your private data with public or premium data sets that are out in, in the real world, right? And that, that merged view of the two different data sources ultimately is greater than the sum of its parts. I think that's something that we have to facilitate uh, and is a real opportunity for us to do in cloud services. So one of the starting points is kind of knowing what your data inventory is. Absolutely. Knowing all the different sources. Yep. 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 Excellent. Adam, look forward to speaking to you again. Thank Likewise. you. Likewise. Thank you, Mike.